I can not believe this one. Uh, Andrew Cuomo, former, well, he was worked under Clinton housing and urban development. Do you know that Andrew Cuomo, must be honest, he was the guy behind all of the adjustable rate mortgage nonsense and the, uh, the uh, no uh, documentation, no money down mortgages that led to the financial crisis. That started. He, he got that ball running under the Clinton administration. Anyway, and he was also governor of the state of New York. Well, uh, for fans of the, uh, the Matrix movies, you know, the first one, again, a classic scene where Morpheus, Morpheus meets Neo for the first time and asks him to, you know, take the red pill or the blue pill. Take the red pill. Oh, you're going to see the reality. Okay. You're going to see the forest for the trees. You're going to see the Matrix. How far does the rabbit hole go? Right. Take the blue pill. You go back to your uh, your old life, your reality. It is what it is. Well, Andrew Cuomo, I'm not saying he took a full red pill, but he microdosed. He most certainly microdosed on this one. Uh, he he penned a piece in the uh, Wall Street Journal um, talking about uh, the migrant crisis. Now we, we we all call it the illegal immigration crisis. Again, this is why I'm talking. He microdose. He's not that. He's not that far yet. The migrant crisis and the urban death spiral. And he writes. He said cities are organic entities. They have life cycles. They can thrive and grow or suffer and shrink. As Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, I learned this firsthand. Detroit wasn't always the Detroit of today. San Francisco today is different from San Francisco 10 years ago. New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago aren't what they were 20 years ago. It's time we opened our eyes to reality. Many cities are going backward. Again, again, this is Andrew Cuomo saying this about uh, our nation's biggest and bluest cities. Now, again, um, many cities are not going backward. Um, just left Tampa. Booming. Uh, Miami booming. Many Nashville booming. I go on and on and on. There are plenty of cities that, that are not going backward. But again, he's, he's talking about, you know, this urban crisis and he's talking about the fact that rising homelessness and crime and taxes. Andrew Cuomo citing taxes. As, a, as another thing, but dealing with reality here and why cities are less inviting. And he goes on, and this is the major point of his article. The tipping point for some cities may be the migrant crisis. As an example, New York's Mayor Eric Adams announced a massive budget deficit caused largely by an estimated $10 billion migrant cost. The deficit requires a reduction in city services because that's what everybody in New York wants. They want less police over officers and less sanitation workers. We want more crime and a dirtier city. Sounds great. Anyway, uh, he says it's an absurd development that cities across the country are being made to shoulder the operational burden and financial cost of managing the migrant population. There's no legal, moral, or practical explanation. Congress writes the immigration laws and the federal executive branch sets policy. It has created this crisis to ignore the consequences is a total abrogation of Washington's responsibility. Okay. This is why I say he, he microdosed. He didn't take the full pill. Andrew, Andrew, buddy, buddy, listen, um, you guys in, in these blue states and these blue cities, we're jumping up and down, jumping up and down, telling everybody how awesome you were and how you were sanctuary cities and sanctuary cities and how you said you wouldn't help. No, no, no. You refused to help the federal government round up illegals, enforce the rule of law. You said, no, we're not going to do it. You told them, no, dude, come on, man. Come on. I, I know. I know many people have a short memory. Uh, I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. Okay, so you're full of it, man. You are. You invited them here. And this, this again, it's a part of the liberal mindset. that There's no logic or reason, and they don't understand the consequences of what they say and do in their actions. Um, you can't have everything. 
you can't have everything. What I like all of a sudden for our illegal immigration problem to be solved and for us to have a system in place where we needed all of these uh, illegals that were coming in, they become legal, they become citizens, they learn a language, they assimilate. Absolutely, that would be great. But that's not happening. That, 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 my friends, is not going on. You wreck, you overwhelm a system, you wreck the system, you wreck everything, you make life for everyone worse. You make it horrible for everyone if you cannot tackle the problem. Like I said, it'd be great if you could handle it, but we can't do that because, again, you know, we have limited amounts of dollars, as you can see. The federal government doesn't even want to spend on this, and they're forcing you to. The need to, 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 to make a decision between a couple of things, to make a compromise, to have a trade-off. Now, that's Washington. They don't, they don't do that. Anyway, um, he's going on and saying the federal government needs to disperse all of these migrants fairly and equitably around the country. Right. Right. I'm sorry. Many of these states, they didn't call for this. They didn't want this. They didn't, they didn't, uh, you know, put out a sign saying that we're so star spangled awesome. We're better than everybody else. We're a sanctuary city. They didn't, they didn't beat their chests like that. Why should they? Why should they? The system in place doesn't work. And again, the federal government doesn't have the money either. We're 33 trillion plus in debt. 33 trillion plus. And again, they're, they're going back and forth on this immigration reform now, trying to get a trade off in regards to, you know, funding for Ukraine and, you know, uh, Israel and whatnot. And again, it's a false choice. It is a false choice. We, we let the doors open. We don't enforce the rule of law. We haven't enforced the rule of law. I mean, honestly, we haven't enforced the rule of law since Reagan came up with that compromise. Barack Obama basically said prosecutorial authority. I'm not going to do it. So, Andrew, I, I mean, I appreciate you're, you're starting to see the forest for the trees, but you might want to take the other half of that pill. Watchdog on WallStreet.com.